Hey everyone, I'm Kevin Wallace from Redemption to the Nation's Church, and I'm grateful that we are going to have this opportunity to bring this message of hope, healing, and restoration to you and your family today. I want you to stay with me till the end. I'm going to come back and pray. Be blessed by the word of the Lord. I want to preach today from uh, a thought that God gave me in prayer this week. And he spoke something, he spoke a phrase which was very unique and sometimes he does that, but I heard the Lord say something very clear to me. It's not something that I would have just thought on my own. He, he whispered this phrase to me and I heard the Lord say to me, for you and I, he said, I'm going to increase your spiritual capacity. I'm going to increase your spiritual capacity. This is not a year to say I've had enough. This is the year of the more of God. And how many can get an agreement right here, even before I begin preaching, and say that 2023, God's going to expand your spiritual capacity. Somebody say amen if you want it to happen in your life. Luke chapter 5, let's read this from the screen, please. If I stop reading, you keep going. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding. He saw at the water's edge two, where are you at family? Second verse, oh yes. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon Peter and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. He made, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and have caught, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. They signaled to their partners. How many know it matters who your partners are? So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and to help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished. And when I got to this thing this morning, I want to just declare this over you. May 2023 be the year God blows your mind. They were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken, verse 10. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on you were fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. And for this week and at least next week we'll see where we go after that i know it's going to be two weeks for sure in terms of what god spoke to my spirit for us i want to talk about increasing spiritual capacity look at someone tell them neighbor it's time to increase our spiritual capacity jesus i need you i know that we need you in this room today help us holy spirit to see you more clearly Lord, I'm praying today that you'll draw close to this house. Let a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus descend on us. Open our eyes and our ears. With ears, let us hear the gospel. With a heart of faith, let us believe to the transformation of our minds. We thank you that we are not being conformed to the culture of this world. We are being transformed by the renewing of our mind. In this room today, we thank you, God. We will not be conformed to the spirit of this age, but we'll be, we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind, by the word of God. In the mighty name of Jesus and for the glory of God and everyone who loves him said amen. You can be seated in Jesus' name. On your way down, tell your neighbor, increasing spiritual capacity. Capacity is defined in Webster's Dictionary as the maximum amount that something can contain. The maximum amount that something can contain. In the assignment that we are in this week and at least next week as well, 
I would say that it is the maximum amount that a person can contain. And so when we speak of capacity, we are speaking of what you have room for, what I have room for. I have found this out about God. God, con he considers his glory and his wine far too precious to waste it on those who would not steward it well. Miracles and blessings and opportunities and open doors and, and, and the goodness of God. God is content with waiting until you're able to steward something rather than quickly giving it to you and watching you and I waste it. When I thought about capacity and how I would articulate this to you, I, there's a number of ways I could. Those of you who've been with us a while know that I'm a fisherman. I love fishing. My daddy took me fishing all my life. I spent most of my life, and I fished in all kinds of places. I fished legally and illegally. <laughs> I fished in places we were supposed to be fishing. I fished in places we got ran off the property fishing. I, I fished in deep water, shallow water. I fished in fresh water and salt water. I love fishing. All my life, I was either on a bank or a boat somewhere with a rod and a reel in my hand, me and my dad and one of his crazy fishing partners. Uh, when they weren't in jail, they were fishing with us. Amen. <laughs> and I remember fishing probably for the first time. Somehow I remember this fishing over at the East Lake Park. How many know East Lake right down the road here? East Lake's got a little park and a pond, and the pond at the deepest place is about 15 feet deep. And if you go there and you catch a brim or a, a, a shell cracker, some people call them, just the size of your hand, that's about the biggest fish in that pond. And so when I was little, I had a Snoopy rod and reel, and it was just a little short rod with a little reel and just a little bit of line. Didn't need much line in that pond. Wasn't enough fish in the pond, wasn't a depth in the pond, wasn't big fish in the pond. The Snoopy rod and reel were just fine. But then when we got, when we got grown up and, and we got a boat, we went to the Tennessee River. Tennessee River's a little different story. At the deepest places of the river, you can, you can fish at a depth of a couple hundred feet, 150 feet in some places over by the dam. And so you had to get a bigger reel with more line and more capacity. Because if you throw the Snoopy rod and reel out in the river, you're not going to catch, uh, efficiently catch the fish that are in because it doesn't go to the bottom. And then when we really moved on up, we went down fishing in the Gulf of Mexico. And when you go fishing in the Gulf of Mexico, you don't go, you cannot go fishing in the Gulf of Mexico and tell everybody that you're going to go fishing in the Gulf of Mexico. You're going to catch a Gulf of Mexico harvest with a Snoopy rod and reel. Because at some point, the demand in the ocean requires a greater capacity than a Snoopy rod and reel. Where's my help in the church today? And so we got some people who come into 2023 and they want an Atlantic Ocean harvest with a Snoopy rod and reel commitment. And what I feel like God is saying is, God is saying, I will, the reel is the same kind of mechanism. The rod is the same. It's a rod and a reel, and it's all line. You got to have bait. You got to have all the same stuff. It's not that you change tools, it's that you increase the capacity. The capacity of the reel has to be greater for the greater harvest to come into the boat. And what I want to tell you is that there are greater opportunities coming to you in this year. That what if God was going to open greater doors for you in this year? What if God was going to open up uh, family blessings? I said family blessings. I did not just say blessings, but what if God has something in mind for your family? So much blessing and some kind of blessing that would not just touch you and your wallet, which is what most of us are concerned about. But what if it was the kind of blessing that was perpetuated throughout a generation? What if it was the kind of blessing that didn't just touch you and bless you, but what if it got all your children and your grandchildren caught up in it? What if it was the kind of blessing that got on you and blessed you and everybody connected to you? I'm telling you this could be the year of greater it could be the year of harvest it could be the year of increase and I believe it is so God is not in the business of wasting the time of his beloved he is not in the business of just putting us on a shelf and, and, and hoping we sit soaking sour till he returns oh no this is the day where the people of God will go deeper they'll do more they'll be stretched beyond and they will see the increase of God on their life This entire message for the next two weeks is predicated upon this fact and this truth.
there is more of God. If you do not understand or embrace the more of God, then what I am preaching to you is simply irrelevant and not necessary. Because if you have had all of God that there is to have, you will not expand capacity to receive more. And I have found out in church that there are plenty of people who are simply satisfied with where they are in God. And like Devin has always said, I will say it again to you this morning, you stop where you stop, Snoopy. Snoopy. You throw the Snoopy rod and reel out in the, in the ocean and it's only got 50 feet of line. And the depth of the ocean in some places runs to five, six, seven hundred feet. You never get to where the fish are if your capacity is reduced. And what God wants to do is bring in a harvest, but what we want to do is often say, I've had enough. I don't know about you, but I haven't had enough of him. I'm not talking about more toys. I'm not talking about more stuff. Help me, Lord. I am talking about more of him in me. Less of me and more of you. I must decrease that you might increase, Lord. I want to ask you a question today. Where have you stopped? You haven't stopped because God stopped. And you haven't stopped because you found all of God. This revelation, when it came to me several, several years ago, six, seven years ago, in Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, the angels cry, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come is say is to come in heaven God gave John the revelator the privilege of being caught up into divine worship and when he peered into divine majestic worship angels in heaven who are beholding him they looked at him and said holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come even in heaven there was more of him to come if heaven cannot contain the fullness of who he is see because religion told us when we get to see when we get to heaven and we see him that's all there is but even in heaven he's the god that is to come which is why eternity has no end if you ever put a lid on eternity it ceases to be the vehicle by which god uses it to reveal the fullness and totality of who he is there is no end to the fullness and totality of his glory which is why we need eternity a space without an end so that forever and ever and ever we make eternal revolutions around the throne and receive eternal revelation of the majesty and the glory of god if heaven cannot contain his glory, our two and a half hour church service can't either. Let me blow your mind even more. If heaven can, if eternity cannot hold his glory, then your 85 year lifespan cannot either. What's the point? The point is we should be asking ourselves the question, why have we stopped where we stopped? when there is more of him hidden than had ever been revealed. So Jesus in this text today, he is building his team. Why would I read this text? It's one of my favorite texts in the whole Bible. But why would I read this text? Because this is where God uh, took me when he began to talk to me about increasing spiritual capacity. Now what's crazy about this is he's building his team and, in, and as he begins to build his team of disciples, he picks three failures. Pastor, I thought we were going to talk about increasing spiritual capacity. And you are introducing this concept by teaching from a story that has associated with three fishing failures. Yes, because most of the time failure is what it precedes an increase in spiritual capacity. I thought it was a victory. No, it's you coming to the end of yourself recognizing you can't do it without him. That often paves the way for you to tap into an expansion. Are you following what I'm saying today? An expansion of spiritual capacity. God wants to stretch you. He wants you to stretch. He wants you to reach. He wants to do beyond and greater things in your life. And oftentimes a good season of failure and feeling like you can't remind you that he is the only 
only one that can. And when you begin to lean into him and begin to see his glory, your glory begins to pale and his glory begins to be seen through your life. These three men failed at fishing and this is interesting because they are professional fishermen. They've been doing this a while. They know what to do. And they know how to do it. And if you study fishing on the Sea of Galilee, the Sea of Gennesaret, as the NIV calls it, the Sea of Capernaum and one other translation, the reality of it is if you study the fishing uh, characteristics and if you study how men fished on the Sea of Galilee, they often fished at night in the shallow end to catch a great harvest. So they have fished, Peter confesses, all night long and caught nothing. How embarrassing. To be a professional and know what you're doing and to do what you know to do and still bring in no harvest. This is a picture, family, of where modern day church is. We know how to fish, we know when to fish, and we know how to catch the fish. But I think we're coming through a season where people are recognizing our gimmicks didn't work, our strategies failed, our way of doing this and operating hasn't panned out like we thought, and Jesus is presenting to the church in 2023 a wake up and a reality check. Are you tired of fishing like you know how to fish, and are you ready to do what I'm wanting you to do? Because if you let me stretch your spiritual capacity, I'm getting ready to blow your mind. So he comes to these three failures and he's showing us something in this entire te text and I'll do, it'll probably wind up being two or three. I don't know. We'll see. I may preach it all in one day today. I'm just feeling the fire of God on the back of my neck right now. Hallelujah. But he says, Peter, I'm getting in your boat. This is almost elementary, and I should almost apologize for how simple this is, but if you're gonna increase your spiritual capacity, the first step, the most important step, you cannot overlook, even though it's so simple and elementary, you must not miss this. If you're going to experience an increase in spiritual capacity, Jesus has to get in your boat. On Monday, he has to get in your boat. Oh no, I want Jesus in my boat right now. It's 1130 on Sunday and everyone in here wants Jesus to get in their boat. But the question is not, is Jesus in your boat on Sunday morning at 1130? The question is, is Jesus in your boat on Monday morning when you're dealing with two demon possessed people at Walmart and you're trying to fight your way through traffic and you're trying to raise children and you're trying to balance a checkbook and you're trying to have a marriage and you're, uh, is Jesus in your boat? I am not asking you if he is savior on Sunday. I'm asking Asking you, is he Lord on Monday? Does he have access to what you got? Does he have access to your life? Does he have the ability to say, I'm getting in your boat? You cannot increase in spiritual capacity if Jesus is in the boat and you're on the shore. You gotta get in the boat with him and let him get in the boat with you so that he can begin to transform your life. We are moving from a season where it has been apropos to simply date Jesus on Sunday and throw our kisses to the idols of this world every other day of the week. He wants to know, am I Savior or am I Lord? Are you just not going to hell or are you really a disciple who wants me to have total control of your life? The good news about this story is that Jesus is not afraid to get in the boat with a failure. Peter caught nothing. Who wants to get in a boat with a fisherman who doesn't know how to catch fish? <laughs> Seasons of failure come into your life. It's time for Jesus to get in the boat. He doesn't run from you when you fail. But you still have to let him have access to your boat. I have found this out 
most of the time, after failure, I try to distance myself from spiritual things. I'm not, I'm not talking about moral failure, although it could be moral failure for us. It could be financial failure. It could be relational failure. It could be a, a choice you made, but it didn't work out like you thought, and it didn't yield the result you thought it was going to. What do you do after failure? Because religion will tell you after failure then you, that you shrink in spiritual capacity. That is not how kingdom life operates. God always walks up to you after a failure and presents you with the opportunity to expand your spiritual capacity, not condemn you and say, look at you, you're sorry fisherman, you caught nothing. I'll go start my own business and put you out of business. He gets in the boat with a failure and says, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use your boat. Because here's the thing about it. God can use the boats of failures to bring transformation. He gets in the boat with Peter, and watch what the text says. He pushed out just a little bit, and he taught them. If step one of increasing spiritual capacity is getting Jesus in the boat, then step two is, is to stop acting like you know it all. Oh, we're dropping bombs like that today. If step one is to get Jesus in the boat, then step two is to quit living like you and I have seen it all and we know it all. Well, I'm 60 year old, I've been around the block. We don't care what block you've been around. <laughs> we're, we're, we're really not even in, in, impressed. The issue, listen, I have seen people who think just because they got older, they got wiser, and that's not true. I've also seen people who were younger who grew in great wisdom because they spent time with Christ. That's why Paul told Timothy, let no man despise your youth. Why? Because just because someone is young doesn't mean the touch of God is not on their life, that the favor of God is not on their life. Devin and I will always be champions of young people. Why? Because we were young when God started using us and remember the feeling when people who were much older looked at us and said, you need to wait your turn. And you know what? We did. But we vowed when we got our turn, we'd never tell younger people, you got to wait your turn. Because the younger people are not the church of tomorrow. They're the church of today. We're my help in the church oh they need to grow in wisdom they need to grow up yes and so does papa and granny sometimes we all need to grow up and grow deeper and go further in the wisdom and the things of god somebody say amen, amen. if you're going to increase your spiritual capacity you must be convinced you haven't seen it all and you don't know it all and you must be willing to not only allow Jesus to get in the boat, but pay attention to the text, family. He only pushes out a little from the shore. And what does he do when he goes out a little? He teaches them. Why? They're not ready for deep yet. They're not ready for deep yet. And I, 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 I was thinking about this this morning. I preached this text so many times I never thought about this. The Bible does not tell us what Jesus taught in the boat. It just says he taught. It's the Greek word didasko. It's where we get the word um, didactic, which is a teaching gift, or, or didache, which is an early teaching of the early disciples in the early church. Uh, it's this idea of communicating something intended to tear a lid off your mental limitation and bring you into a fuller, greater understanding so that you are not limited by ignorance, but able to step into fullness because of the revelation God intends to give you. And there are people who are fishermen or businessmen or businesswomen or athletes or cooks or CEOs or lawyers or preachers. Here's the point. If at any point in your life you're too smart for Jesus to get in your boat and teach you, you have already begun to limit your spiritual capacity. He gets in the boat of a failure and pushes out a little. And he begins to teach them. Why? Because he recognizes in order to increase Peter and James and John, their spiritual capacity, he has to transform their thinking. How do you transform the thinking of professional fishermen 
to do something that is absolutely contrary to all they've ever been taught or trained. So what does he teach? I have no clue what he taught, but whatever he teaches, it begins to transform their mind. I want to say this. Th this is akin to when, when you think about not being able to be taught because you know it all or seen it all. I, I, I heard the Lord whisper this to me in Cleveland. I'm just going to give it to you today. You must be very careful that you do not worship your tradition more than you do Jesus. Now, when I said that in Cleveland, it ruffled all kinds of feathers and we felt the, uh, the Sanhedrin rise up. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I don't care. Because tradition is not the same as Jesus. Get this, family. In Mark's gospel, the sixth chapter, Jesus rebuked them because, watch, they took the tradition of men. The Bible says this. They took the traditions of man and made them commandments of God. That is the epitome of a spirit of religion. To be so married to tradition that you would actually manipulate the word and call your tradition the commandment of God so that you could stand up with your commandment from God and beat people into submitting to your favorite tradition. Sit down and shut up. Why do you say it like that? Because this spirit is driving people away from the love of Jesus. And we, I watch it. People are paralyzed in religious fear. Because men or women get up and they, my, my sweet mama who's here on the second row today, she'll tell you this. She's probably not wanting me to tell you, but I will because I have the microphone. My mom didn't wear pants till the third year I pastored her. You know why? Because my whole life, they told the sisters in my church, if you wear pants, you're going to hell. <laughs> Find that in the Bible. They told women, if you wear makeup, you're going to hell. It's a sin for some women not to wear makeup. <laughs> Come on. Smile, Dev. Come on. But what we find is we find that people get married to traditions and they turn traditions into commandments. And when you act like your tradition is of God and it is God, you start building something around traditions that were given power in one season but will never be able to sustain you in the next because God refuses to build a movement where you created a monument. So, so if you come into a church like this and see all this and you don't see a choir stand with a hundred voice choir in robes, you immediately begin to say, this is so worldly. If they had the glory, they wouldn't need a smoke machine. All these, all these screens, well, listen to me. You, you have got your eyes on the wrong thing. You think that heaven is going to look like a home interior booth with mauve walls and pink carpet and a blue couch with a painting on a wall and a dove in the baptistry and a ceiling fan over the deacon corner and you think that's the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, if you think this, this blows your mind, if this distracts you, what are you going to do when you step into a place who has a foundation made of seven sardius stones and a rainbow circles the throne and peals of thunder and rolls of lightning happen and it it flashes here and there and it flashes everywhere and no one's ever distracted because we didn't come for the thunder we didn't come for the lightning I'm not going to heaven for all of the stuff I want to see the face of the one who has eyes like fire and there are many people many times if we're not careful we will worship our, listen, I love tradition. I sing hymns. I sung hymns last night to Asher. 
until he, he kept wanting mama, I kept saying, I'm singing another one. Page 333. I'm singing another one. Page 52. He kept crying. I kept on singing. And I kept singing and I kept singing. I love tradition. But let me tell you what's happening some, in some places. They have absolutely removed themselves from the un, unveiling of the all-consuming glory of God. Because instead of moving with the cloud, they stopped with an idol. And they turned what God blessed in one season into their source of life and I love tradition but if you love tradition more than you love Jesus you will become traditional and if you get stuck in being traditional too long you will become fixed in traditionalism and I don't know about you but I don't want anything to do with traditionalism why because the glory of God is not moving backwards it's not setting still the cloud of glory is moving and the church better learn how to move with the cloud And I'll move on from this, but it's arrogant to presume you know how God wants it done. What kind of arrogance is it for you to go to somebody's house? How, I would never come to your house and just make myself so at home that I rearrange your living room. <laughs> Wouldn't it be something if I came to your house and said, that's a horrible place for the couch, move it over here. Those curtains are nasty. Tear them down and put blinds up. Come on. It would be horrible if I walked in your kitchen and rearranged your cabinets. Why? Because it's not my house. And sometimes we think we know how we want to how God wants his house because we decorate it like we want our favorite house of worship. Well, I want to tell you something. There are generations coming together in the house of the Lord. There are streams that are converging in the house of the Lord. There are generational streams. There are racial streams. There are worship streams. There there are music genre streams. It does not all sound the same. My God, I didn't even have this plan to say. Somebody better catch what I'm laying down today. We will never be a house pigeonholed into a traditional way of doing things because there is a sound that is rising from the earth that is a product of every nation, kindred, tribe, tongue, young and old coming together. What are we doing? Without question, 100% of the time, the people who resist this kind of message the most have children that don't love God. I'm not trying to be mean or ill. They don't come to church anymore because they found out we are in love with our tradition more we are than we are with them and the next generation. We would rather preserve how we fish. Peter, James, John, you got a fishing business. Yep, been doing this 30 years. <laughs> Jesus gets in the boat. I'm going to talk about it more next week. He gets in the boat and teaches. Why does he teach? Because teaching transforms the mind. I love shouting. Me too. But some people need to be quiet and learn. Be taught. That's why the Bible calls, uh, the, Bible calls the fivefold necessary for the equipping of the saints apostle apostle prophet evangelist pastor teacher you cannot get away from the teacher yeah we talk less about it than any other part of the fivefold and i think it may be more necessary as the church continues to press into its purpose because without people who have a didactic grace to explain teach and transform thinking through revelation not just nuggets Oh, that was such a nugget. I'm tired of nuggets that go in notebooks that never manifest into transform lives. We need more than nuggets. We need more than information. We need a spirit of wisdom and revelation to sit on the church. The teacher, no matter how gifted, the evangelist, no matter how anointed, the pastor, the prophet, the apostle, no matter how graced they are, they will never be the agent of transformation. It will always be the Holy Spirit working through the people of God. Now you need a pastor. Oh, I felt that, but let me say it again. You need an apostle. You need a prophet. You need an evangelist. You need a teacher. But never get it mixed up. It's not their gift that transforms you and I. It is the anointing and the person of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus... 
is about to stretch these men. They failed and he gets in their boat and he is about to stretch them. And how does he stretch them? He teaches them. And he does it in increments. Y'all not gonna like this. He pushes out a little and teaches them in the shallow end so that when they get to the deep end, they don't waste what they've been waiting on. I'm going to show you something. Uh, I think it's here. Can you put up John 16, verse 1? John 16, verse 1. Now, Jesus, let me give you some context. Jesus is speaking in this gospel of John, the 16th chapter. He's speaking to his disciples, preparing them for the day, as you will see in just a moment, when they're going to be attacked. And he says something powerful in this chapter I want us to see about his, uh, the way in which he teaches us and when he shares words with us, when he speaks to us. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All this I have told you so that you will not fall away, verse two. Keep going with me. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering God a service offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. Verse four, watch this. I have told you all this so that when their time comes, you will remember I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you. God doesn't tell them the day he calls them that they're going to kick you out of the synagogue and try to kill you. Because who would sign up for that? <laughs> Peter, James, John, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men and get you killed. Yes, let's go. <laughs> he doesn't tell them that in the beginning. Why? Because he's with them. And he recognizes that his presence among them is satisfying them and will grow them so that they can eventually hear what he is telling them now. Keep going, verse 12. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. So he says that in the beginning, Jesus didn't tell them some things in the beginning. And then he says, even now there are more things to tell you that I cannot tell you now. What's the point? The point is he waits to speak until you have the capacity to receive what he's saying. He didn't tell them they were gonna suffer in the beginning. Why? They didn't have the capacity to understand the concept of suffering. And then he says, there are more things to share with you that I can't share with you now because you're not ready to bear it. And I thought about that as I read it. Things that he wanted to say in the beginning that he didn't say that he is saying now and things that he wanted to say now that he couldn't say that he would have to share later. What does God want to be saying to me right now that I'm not prepared to receive? Okay. So y'all all not, yeah, take that, Pastor, but I'm going to put it on y'all. What is God wanting to say to you right now that you cannot hear him say because you can't have the capacity to receive it? I got things to share with you, but you're not ready for it now. That's why I got you in this shallow end in this boat. That's why I'm teaching you because I need to expand your mind, your thinking, your expectation. You caught nothing last season. And if you're not careful, failure will become an identity rather than a season. So Peter, James, John, I don't want you to become a failure. I want you to recognize I'm going to use this season of failure as a catalyst to bring you into greater spiritual capacity. Somebody in this room is dealing with failure and the spirit of God wants me to tell somebody it is not final. God 
takes him out a little and teaches him just a few feet from the shore. Why? He's got to get him off the shore, out of the failure, in a place of transformation. Why? Because we're going deeper. The problem is, sometimes we don't want him in the boat. And secondly, sometimes we don't want to hear what he has to say. It is almost as if I can hear Peter, who looked at Jesus and said, we fished all night and caught nothing. And, and Peter would look at Jesus and say, now Jesus, you stick to being Jesus, and I'll stick to being the fisherman. But failure has a way of humbling you. <laughs> when what you knew would work don't work, you start getting desperate. When things don't work out like they used to and you didn't change the formula, all you did was get addicted to the victory that you kept on thinking up. And you said, that was my victory. I knew how to fish. I knew how to catch those fish. And God said, if that's the way you're going to feel about it, I'm going to strip the net of every fish. I'm going to strip the business of every blessing. I'm going to strip the family of every breakthrough. I'm going to let you come up with nothing while you think you're doing it in yourself. I'm going to let you come to the end of you and recognize that everything you thought you knew how to do, you don't know how to do. And if you'd come to the end of yourself and get desperate for me, if you'll turn to me and let me teach you how to transform your mind, I'll rip the lid. I don't know who I came to preach to on the third Sunday in January, but somebody needs the lid to be ripped off their mind. The enemy wants you to stay on the shore, and if he can't keep you on the shore, he'll be satisfied with you staying stuck in the shallow end of Christianity. Somebody has got to break out in 2023 and say this cycle of failure is coming, Tundobokosha. This cycle of failure is coming to an end. I refuse to fail ever again, not because I couldn't fail, but because I'm going to value the word of the Lord in a way I've never valued the word of the Lord before. And if God ever speaks a word to me, the word will not come back void. I don't care how it your net was after last night's failure. I want to tell you if God said get to the deep you better cut every anchor and get your tail to the deep end. Suck. Oh God I feel like hollering in here right now. Somebody is getting ready to get up out the shallow end. Somebody is getting ready to get out of the land of limitation. You're going to the deep. And, and well, let me just keep going here. And the Bible says he taught them and he looked at Peter and gave Peter the opportunity of a lifetime. Launch out into the deep. It's more than a fishing assignment. It's a moment of transformation for a life lived. God is not just calling you to deep water. He's expanding your spiritual capacity to show you he is God over everything in your life. Nobody goes fishing in Capernaum Sea in the daytime in the deep end. Nobody. It's not what they do. They don't fish in the deep end in the daytime. They fish in the shallow end at nighttime. Until God says, go fishing in the deep end in daytime. And then, see, this is where churches lose the anointing. They do shallow end fishing at nighttime, and they keep doing it because, A, it's what everybody likes, and B, it's always worked. And Jesus said, I want you to love me more than your tradition. I want you to love me more than loving the way you fish, the time you fish, and the net you fish with. I want you to love me so much and value my word so much in your life that when I tell you to get out of the shallow and get to the deep, you don't have a conversation. You don't have to have a vote. You don't have to sit around in some circle and talk about how it might work and what if it don't work. Oh no, if God said get to the deep, I don't even care what I catch. 
I am going to honor the word of the Lord because I'm tired of living on the shore being reminded of my failure. I feel the Holy Ghost and I'm tired of living in the shallow end always having to have somebody else teach me one more nugget and never coming into transformation. If you going to be everything God called you to be, slap three people right now tell them God is about to stretch you. Oh my God, if you like being comfortable, this is the year where the comforted will be divinely discomforted. God is about to stretch you. He's about to call you. He's about to loose you. And you're not going to look like what you looked like last year at the end of this year. So, he says, launch out into the deep. I'm going to finish the rest of it next week, but listen to what he says. And let down your nets for a great drought. And I'm going to end with what Peter said. Peter said, we have toiled. Oh, I'm fixing to say something here. We have toiled all night long and caught nothing. And the word toil in the Greek is work. Touch somebody, tell them we worked, we worked, we worked. We, come on, tell your neighbor, we worked, we worked, we worked. We worked on this, we worked on that. We worked on our finances, we worked on our family. We worked on our job, we worked on our business. We worked on our dream, we worked on our college education. We worked. We worked to get a plan together. We worked to buy a house. We worked to get a new car. We worked, we worked, we worked. And we worked all night and we caught nothing. And God said, that's all right. You worked and caught nothing. But the word is about to go to work. Slap somebody, tell them, neighbor, let the word work. Oh, I'm getting ready to go in my car, but I want to tell somebody you worked and worked and worked and what you worked for didn't work out like you thought it would but God sent me to tell somebody 2023 is not only the year you go to work it's the word it's the year that the word go to work for you God is about to send a word yes he is man does not live by every word alone by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction touch your neighbor right now tell your neighbor let the word go to work for you the word is about to work I don't know what prophecy you've been holding on to but God told me to tell you the word of God is quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword I don't know what you've been waiting on but the Bible said so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it will accomplish what I sent it to do and it will not come back void slap three people tell them the word works the word works the word works I want you to praise him right now that if your children are away from God and God gave you a word over your children you don't need to stay up one more not worrying about it let the word work let the word work let the word work over your finances let the word work over our city somebody say speak Lord the word the word the word stand with me I'm through preaching I want to remind somebody the word works how the word works this week if you were to get a bad report from a doctor pat the doctor on the shoulder and tell the doctor when they ask you why ain't you all sad tell them doctor the facts are what you just told me but the truth is the word works hey the word works when it looks like hell has got you all hemmed in and you don't know how to get out and you don't know which way to run somebody throw your hands up and holler the word works this is the year when we are to value the working of the word in our life. And the seeds that you have sown that you've been wondering 
if they're down in there growing and where is the fruit God said it's growing down before it grows up but he told me to tell you the word works and I tell you you're coming into a season man and woman of God what about Shia? Somebody begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I sense the Holy Spirit increasing your spiritual capacity, man and woman of God. Hallelujah. You're coming into a year. You're coming in. God's been stretching you. And the enemy has been harassing you while God has been stretching you. But I want the most high. But I want to tell you. God told me to tell you just then. He said, tell them they're going to win. They're they're going to win. They're going to see the victory. They're going to see the victory. Throw your hands up right now. If you love him, throw your hands up and begin to thank him for his word. Come on. Honor the word of the Lord. I'm not talking about my preaching. I'm talking about what God is saying to somebody in this room. What God is saying to somebody in this room. Honor the word of the Lord. Honor the word of the Lord. Honor the word of the Lord in your life. The Bible said in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 1, Paul told Timothy, he said, remember every prophetic word that was spoken over you by the presbytery. Because with every prophetic word God spoke over you, he gave you a weapon to win the warfare. You need to go back and get into your notebook and find those old prophetic words. Because just because you gave up on it, I feel the Holy Ghost here. Just because you gave up on it doesn't mean God gave up on it. He said heaven and earth will pass away. The flower will fail and the grass will wither but the word 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 of God shall abide forever somebody needs to thank him for the abiding word you gave up and tried to work it out yourself it did not work but the word will work somebody shout the word will work the word will work and we got to we got to quit being married to tradition and stop falling in love with how we did it and our favorite way of doing it. And we got to fall in love with Jesus. all over the church. Holy Ghost, speak to us right now. We want you to speak, Lord. We want you to speak, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The tongues have come forth. Now, God, give the interpretation. We thank you, Holy Ghost. We thank you for it, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, pray. Don't wait. Don't look around. Pray. Ask God to give the interpretation. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. We thank you. We thank you for your word. We value your word. We value your word, Lord. We want you to talk to us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship. Come on, pray. We're not, we're not moving on. I'm not, I'm not shaking this until, until we make sure that Spirit of God has an opportunity to say whatever he wants to this house. Lord, I pray you'll speak to any interpreter in this room. And the interpretation of the tongues will come forth right now in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands with me all over this room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, church. Lift your hands. We thank you, God. We thank you. We thank you. Here's what I feel God zeroing in on this moment right now for somebody. I feel God zeroing in in this moment on people who sense God stretching them, increasing their capacity. Because the failure and the shoreline are not where you're going to stay the rest of your life. And even the shallow end and God training and teaching and transforming, that's not where you're going to be for the rest of your life. 
There is coming a transformation that will empower and release you to the deep place. What you must understand is that when you get to the deeper places, it's more challenging to fish there. It's more dangerous there. It takes a greater level of trust there. But there is a harvest waiting there that has your name on it. And I want to pray for people in this room today. I know there's been so much prayer already. I want to come into agreement with people who would say, Pastor Kevin, I cannot spend another year of my life washing my net, rehearsing my failure, stuck on the shore, or even floating in the shallow end. Come on. Yeah, it's already open. I, I want him to increase my spiritual capacity. If that's you and I'm preaching to you, come stand in this altar. Kneel in this altar. Come to this altar hungry. You might even have to come desperate. Tears might be coming down your face. That's all right. He understands it. Come on, come on, come on. 2023. Come on, I hear the, I hear the cry of hunger coming. I hear the cry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, just come and kneel. Come and kneel. I want everybody to begin to pray in the Spirit all over. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. Silence is not the language of this moment. This is the this is the moment of desperation. Lord, not another year of cycle, not another year of living with a diminished spiritual capacity. My priorities are getting ready to come into alignment. Come on, pray, people of God, all over this room. Take your neighbor by the hand and pray. Come on, if your spouse, your buddy, your friend, whoever you came with, so find somebody to get in agreement with you. Come on, come on, pray. Come on and pray. Come on and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's breaking failure off some people in this altar right now. And it's not just a failure, it's a spirit of failure. It's a spirit of disappointment and failure that's trying to settle on you. Come on and pray. I'm not going to do anything else until we get a breakthrough right here in prayer. Cycles and seasons of failure. Spirits of failure. In the name of Jesus, the enemy wants you to stay on the shore. The enemy wants you to stay bound up in a spirit of failure. Uh -huh, the deep is calling. Deep cries out unto deep. Deep is crying out unto deep. Shallow won't do it in 23. Shallow won't do it in 23. I break a spirit of failure off your heart and mind right now. In the name of Jesus. Woo! I break it off your heart and mind right now. The decision might have led to failure. But God is going to get the glory even after the decision. And God is going to redirect your path. And it begins right now. It begins right now. It begins right now. Somebody turn your prayer life. Prayer, prayer volume up right here. Come on, turn it up, turn it up. Ho. Ho. Spirit of failure is broken now. Spirit of failure is broken now. Let him in your boat. Let him in your boat. He wants to get in your boat. He wants to get in the boat. He wants to get in the boat. Let him in, let him in, let him in. Let him in the business boat. Let him in the marriage boat. Let him in the family boat. Let him in the education boat. Let him in, let him in, let him in. Let him in, let him in the boat. Let him in, let him in, let him in, let him in. Come on in, Jesus. You can use my boat. Teach me, train me. Whatever you do, don't leave me like you found me. Come on, lift your hands, church. Ask him to begin to stretch your life. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Seasons of failure. Seasons of failure are not final. 
Seasons of failure are not final. Seasons of failure are not final. Lay your hand on your neighbor's shoulder. Come on, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. I want you to pray, God, in this year, stretch them. Stretch them. Increase their capacity. There's more for them. The enemy wants them to think it's over. But pray for them like you know the devil is a liar. Pray for them like you know this is the year of increase. This is the year of more. This is the year of increase. Stretch. 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 Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep going. Stretch. Stretch. You stop where you stop. That's where we usually stop, but we're not stopping there anymore. Go to the next level and stretch. 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 Come on, 60 more seconds right here. 60 more seconds. Somebody is getting in the boat and Jesus is getting in with you right now. Come on. Get off the shore. Get off the shore. Get off the bank. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Stretch us, God. Increase us, Lord. Da 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 ho si turu no mundo ho shete. O da 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 ba si anda ba ba do 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 mo sheke tarababa. Ula ba ba da da ba koshundo do ba ba. Come on, I feel something breaking. I feel the anointing breaking some things. Come on and begin to lift your voice and worship. Hey! Come on, let deep cry out on the deep. Open up your mouth and out of your belly. Begin to cry out for this year. Begin to cry out. Let your expectation be matched by the desperation of your voice. Come on. Oh. Oh. It's not over, it's not over, it's not over. It's not over, it's not over, it's not over. Sotara Bobby, Bob, go lay your hands on that man right there. Mark, get behind him. Lay your hands on him. It's not over, it's not over, it's not over. More, more, more of the glory, more of his power, more of his spirit. Jesus. Tim, go pray for that man.
attention. Somebody hungry for more of him. Let him in the boat, let him in the boat, let him in the boat, let him in the boat. for every family in this room right now before we go I want you to lift your hands in a receiving position may the God who is to come begin to come upon you and your house in greater measures in 2023 May the God who is to come begin to come upon your house in greater ways in 2023, Jesus. May the God who is to come, Holy Spirit, Jesus, Felix, it's coming. Glory's coming. Holy Ghost. Father, rip every lid off every family. If you have a yes in your spirit to this, just, just stay in agreement with me right here. Lord, rip every, agree, rip every lid off every family. Lids that have limited and kept families. Bound up and hindered. I declare those lids come off now in the name of Jesus. Take the limits off, Lord. Take the lid off, Lord. Oh. 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 There's something glorious happening in this house. Jesus, let the lid be ripped off for everything and everybody connected to them. Let the lid be. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Some of you will be whatever with me for saying this before we leave, but I have to. I cannot tell you how expectant I am for God's goodness to be revealed to every family in this church in this year. I believe I will hear more testimonies of it being one of the greatest years of your life. I believe I will hear that from many of you. But hear me very clearly, please. <clears throat> in the next few days, you don't hear me talk like this frequently at all. But in the next few days, God is going to put in every family's hand a first fruit offering. I'm not even telling you how much it is because I don't know. But don't eat the seed because God's going to bless families. And he's going to bless the families who increase their spiritual capacity. And let me tell you this, giving increases capacity. Say amen or oh me or something. We're not taking an offering. I'm not telling you that. I'm, I, I feel compelled. I was about to walk off this stage. Some of you have been praying, not all of you, but some of you have been praying for a seed to put in the ground between the 22nd and the 29th of January for first fruit. Why do we call it first fruit? Because it is the first. It's not the only fruit offering, it's the first fruit offering. You give the first fruit offering 
for the other fruit that's on the way. The first was the first and it was the best. And the priest would walk out in the field and cut the first leaf that broke through the ground. They would wait for it to grow just a bit, cut it off, and it was the first fruit. And they literally would take that best plant that pierced through the ground, cut it off, and they took it to the priest as an offering. And what they were saying is, God gets the best, and we will experience his goodness in everything that follows this gift. I want you to be blessed. And if God doesn't give you something to sow, and you don't have something to sow, there is no shame in that. But my Bible says he gives seed to the sower. And if you want your family to be blessed financially, I'm going to pray for you with this, and we're going to be done. I want you to lift your hands. And I am asking you specifically. We have prayed for every spiritual thing. We have prayed for every physical thing. But I want to know who is asking God for financial blessing on your family this year to lift your hands right now. You say, Pastor, I'm, a sh I'm ashamed or I'm, I feel some kind of way. Listen, we don't love money. We love Jesus. Money is not the root of all evil. Loving money is the root of all evil. If you stay in love with Jesus and he gives you resources, he trusts you to advance his kingdom and agenda in the earth. If you want to be blessed in this year, lift your hands. Lord, I am asking you in the next several days to put significant seed in their hand. And as they sow significant seed, I pray, Lord, that in this year you would unveil and unlock and give them an unusual, significant harvest. So much so that like Isaac, when we see it happen, we know it was the Lord that did it. Bless these families. Break lack mentalities off of our life. Expand our capacity. Stretch us, Jesus, for your glory. Now, I seal every blessing, every prophecy, every prayer. People are still praying. Let them pray. But I seal everything that God has done today, and I declare the word will remain and produce harvest. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Just stay and linger and worship. If you're going to fellowship, you can do that. Do that in the lobby or on the corridors. Let these in the altar that are worshiping do that without being inhibited and let them just continue to encounter the goodness of God. I love you, family. Get here Wednesday night. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you in the presence of God. Friend, I believe God is a miracle-working God, and the greatest miracle that God could ever work in your life is the gift of salvation. And I believe today somebody's watching me who says, Pastor Kevin, would you pray for me? I want to give my life to God. I want to serve the Lord. I want Jesus to save me. Let's pray this prayer together today. Mean it in your heart. Say, Dear God, I repent of my sins. I turn to you today, Lord Jesus, believing that you're the Son of God, and that you died for my sins. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Listen, friend, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to go to kevinwallace.tv, and I just want you to drop us a prayer request and let us know that you gave your heart to Christ. Our team want to pray for you. We want to make sure that you're in a good, loving, Bible-believing church wherever you're from, and that you continue to grow in your walk with Jesus Christ best days of your life are still ahead of you and we're praying for you today. God bless. I look forward to seeing you next week right here.